Hello and welcome to Play Hive Field in Westwood, Massachusetts on Friday, September 22nd for SportView's award-winning production of Holliston Panther Football 2017 found only on HCAT TV. Tonight, the Panthers face the Westwood Wolverines to begin the Tri-Valley League large play. My name is Tom Emmons and alongside is the color man who was born in the Tri-Valley League, the legend, Jay Wyman. Jay, the TVL crown has gone to either Holliston or Westwood each of the last eight seasons. 2017 looks to make it nine straight. What do you think we can expect to see tonight? Well, you're going to see two one-and-one one teams who I'm not sure either, either team quite knows quite how good or how bad they are right now. And the big thing about this game tonight is, Tom, it's just not just that the winner will have the one game up, but they'll actually have two games up because they will have the tiebreaker in, in this situation. So what they want to do is... They, they want to make sure that uh, you know, whichever team wins with the great advantage they're going to have, both teams are going to be out here. Hollison coming off a big loss is hopefully going to be really sky high coming in here. And uh, Westwood is coming off a big win against Norwood. So we're going to see two teams. We're going to tr try and figure out at the end of this game where they are and where this league is going. Like you said, the Panthers come into this game with a record of 1-1. One and one. Last year they were 9-2. and two. Their head coach is Todd Kiley in his 14th season with the Panthers, bringing a record of 125 wins against 38 losses. Westwood one and one as well. They were nine and uh, they were seven and four last season. Their head coach is Brad Pendell in his first season with the Wolverines. Interesting enough, both head coaches are 1989 grads from the teams that they're coaching. That's right. So we got Westwood versus Holliston in the head coaching. And uh, as we talked in the pregame, uh, our preseason show, Todd remembers there's been a little trash talking between the two coaches about uh, their the couple of games that they played against each other in 1987, 1988. They did, but but uh, Coach Kylie was very impressed with um, the, the new Westwood coach, and uh, he's actually very welcoming him uh, to welcome into the league. He's very welcoming for that. So, all right, well, head uh, captains are out for the coin toss for the Panthers. Number 34, Ben Thomas. Number four, Ryan Benko. Number 53, Alex Kelly. And number 72, Scott Elliott. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. And now, HCAT's onboard statistician, Carlos Canto, with the pregame lowdown. Hey, thanks, Tom. You know, both of these teams are very familiar with each other. In the last five years, going back to 2012, they've played each other 10 times. Westwood holding a very narrow 6-4 to four lead in the series in those last 10 games. That includes the regular season, Thanksgiving Day games, even a playoff game thrown in there as well. However, here's what might be the key stat. The team that wins the rushing battle is 9-1. Uh, it's really the only dominating stat that you can say um, uh, you know, when these two teams play each other. And that one time that the rushing leader did not win the game outright was in 2020, uh, 2013, that playoff game. Uh, Westwood actually outrushed the Panthers 241 to 147, but Holliston came away with the victory 35 to 20. Thank you, Los. Holliston has. Number eight, Brad Seymour, and number five, Jake Armstrong, back to receive the kick. It's a cool night. We've got a misty, heavy mist rain falling, just keeping everything wet, but not really a, a bad rain. We've got a decent uh, wind blowing at the Panthers' back right now. Westwood's kick bounces, picked up at the 25-yard line by Ben Wolf. He takes it across the tw thir 35 to the 36. The Panthers will start first and 10. Well, that kicker you saw, Nicholas McQuarrie, is a really good kicker. He's got a powerful leg, and, you know, a day, situation like this where you've got two teams that may be really even, that can make him down to a kicking game later on in the, in the, near the end of the game. So we'll see how that works out. Panthers come out in war formation. Number 11, Henry Naughton pitches the ball to 
Jake Armstrong off the left side. Panthers move the pile for a gain of six or seven. And it'll be second down and four for Holliston. Armstrong on one wing. Seymour on the other. They pitch it to Seymour. Cuts it in behind the center. Westwood stuffs that play for no gain. Well, Halston, you know, came out last week and ran a lot of spread offense and uh, weren't really moving the ball until they went into their war offense. And then they had a really nice run by um, Seymour. And uh, that opened things up, and they were able to score two touchdowns late, late in the game running the war. Looks like Brad Seymour able to get a yard, so it brings up a third and three. There's the handoff to Seymour on the jet play. Cuts it up inside, but that's going to bring up fourth down and two. So Hollison, will, I'm guessing they'll go for it here. Panthers are lining up like they're going to go for it. Coach Kiley waving in the play. Norton over center. Pitches to Armstrong. And Armstrong off that left side is going to be very close to a first down. Yeah, I think he got it. And got he the, got it. Yeah, he got the first down. And so Holliston rolls the dice on fourth and two and moves the, moves the chains. 9-12 left in the first quarter. No score. Holliston on the move on the war offense. This time the pitch is to Seymour. Seymour forward for a gain of two. Starting five up front, number 72, Scott Elliott, number 54, Will Solorier, number 53, Alex Kelly. Number 50 is Sam Lynch. Number The center is number 57, Will Crowley. Number 43, Topher Ryan. Here's the pitch. Back to Armstrong. Intended for Topher Ryan, incomplete. That brings up a third down and nine. That's a nice play, but I think when you when you run that play, Tom, you, you want your receiver probably to go a little deeper than that because everybody, as you can see, on the offense and defense are all in one place here, and it's a lot easier to cover somebody when they're, when they're that close. So that, that play, Hollison had run before, and they ran it down the sideline, a deep pa deeper pass, and it worked very well against um, Millis. Well, Holliston's got Ryan Benko, number four, in at quarterback to go to the spread here on third down and long. 8.37 to go in the first quarter. No score. Benko looks left, goes right, complete. Seymour with the catch. He crosses midfield to the 45-yard line. That's bringing up fourth down and one. And we have a timeout here. A timeout on the field. We'll take a break. Okay, we're back. Uh, injury timeout there, unfortunately. Number 74, James Dawson, a senior, was taken off the field. The report we heard was a broken ankle. Hate to hear that, any kind of injury like that, especially a senior, his senior year. We, Our thoughts and prayers are with number 74 on Westwood. And, and just back to action, because that's what we do here. Fourth down and one for Holliston. Pitches to Armstrong. Gets into the second level and picks up a first down. So the Panthers have to go to fourth down and short two times in a row, Jay. Two times in a row, and they, were, they did it both times. And they were able to make that, that first down. And I think Coach Kiley wants to come out and run very quickly off his offense here. They go to Armstrong again, left side. Breaks it off. Now, one see of the, a gain on the play. Let's see the ball get down. One of the things we saw in the Pembroke game is that Pembroke was able to attack the outside of this defense. They try and play, looks like a 4-4-3 four, four, uh, defense here. If you can get to that outside, you can make some room. Second and six after the gain of four. This time they go to arm, uh, Seymour off the right side. Ball's on the ground. It looks like Holliston's on top of it. So Seymour, after a nice, nice run, 
Had the ball come out as he came down to the turf and picked up by number 53, senior captain Alex Kelly. And that's going to be a problem tonight. It's going to be able to, the team's really going to have to work hard to hold onto that ball at any runner because they're looking to knock it out, and the ball's going to be really slick with this just fine mist that's uh, coming down here at uh, Westwood. First and 10 at the 15, pitch to Armstrong, reverse to Seymour, but snuffed out there by the Wolverines. And no gain on the play. Be second down, actually a loss of two. Second down and 12, 6.51 clock running here in the first quarter, no score. Panthers have been pounding the rock except for one pass play. Not an under center. Pitches to Armstrong, left side, bounces it to the outside. Nobody in front of him. Touchdown, Panthers. Well, that's what I'm saying, Tom. You gotta get to that outside. The, the way they play, they're very, very tough inside. A very, you know, Hollis and now is this is the third time they've run up against a team that from tackle to tackle has been really strong and, and big and strong and, and, you know, a lot of time they can control that middle. But when you get to that outside, Hollis can use their speed, um, and that's an advantage that they're going to have uh, basically all night long. Panthers line up for the extra point. Number, number 44, Connor Mulvaney. Kick is up and good. So with 6.31 to go in the first quarter, the Panthers are on the board, leading Westwood seven to nothing. Jake Armstrong with his third touchdown of the year, the fifth of his, fifth of his Panther career. And uh, Holliston just pounded the rock there, Jay. They came out, made no bones about it. They, they lined up in war and uh, a couple of tough, fourth downs, but we're able to outlast Westwood there. Well, you know, it, the great thing about having two completely different offenses is you can um, adjust them to the game situation and to the environment. Here in, in a in a wet, uh, soaking wet uh, field, you know, throwing the ball might be a little bit more difficult. So it's great to have that, that offense that you can just get in there and just pound away. The other thing is, after last week, I think this offensive line really wants to prove something, and I think Coach Canelli and, and, I'm, and I'm sure, um, you know, this offensive line went to the coaches and said, you know, let us do it. And uh, the war is one way to do that, and they get some really good blocking up front. Colonel Mulvaney ready for the kickoff. His kick is going to come down at the 10-yard line. Taken by doing? Colin Fay. What is he doing? Crosses the 25 to the 26-yard line, tackled by Henry Naughton and Kevin Quinn. So now Hollis and defense comes on the field, and uh, their issue tonight is going to be uh, Jake Antonucci. If you can come in there and somehow control Antonucci and take him out of the offense, uh, it's going to be a much easier night for Hollis. And Jake's a really good ball player. Reed Wilson, their, qu their quarterback, is a good quarterback too, and he's, uh, you know, sometimes he will tend to throw the ball a little high. So Hollis and defensive backs, if they're back there, they're going to be able to take advantage of that and maybe get some turnovers. Well, Reed Wilson, the senior captain last year, he was 131 completions out of 260 passes for 1,660 yards and 17 touchdowns. Antonucci in motion, handoff to him on the jet play around the right end. He gets forced out of bounds after a short gain. Now, one of the things that Hulse is going to have to do, Antonucci is not just a fast and quick runner, he's a really smart runner. So you're gonna, you, you've got to contain him from the inside, but you can contain him all you want, but he'll cut up inside if there's no linebacker or defensive back there to make that play. So you've got to make sure that wherever he is, you have two or three guys over there. So second down and seven for the Wolverines. Antonucci split to the left with Brian Murray. Handoff straight up the middle to Fay, and he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Nice job by the defensive line. The linebacker's coming up to help out. And they have had, one of the things Westwood has had is a little little problem running the ball, and now they've just lost their second uh, offensive line, starting offensive lineman down there tonight. They lost one against Norwood, so 
But the uh, first two games this season, Jay, only 57 yards rushing. Yep. yep. So it'll be third down and seven for Westwood. So here you really gotta really gotta make sure that you watch Antonucci here. Antonucci is in the slot to Wilson's left. Wilson rolls left, looks downfield, connects. Nice catch by senior Brian Captain Brian Murray. Yeah, that's and that's first a, down. That's a nice play by uh, Westwood. What Westwood did is they they took Antonucci, brought him downfield, cleared out that area, and then Murray came across the field and he was able to make that that catch. So the ball's at the 44. Clock running with 4:36. Or clock stop with 4:36 to go in the first quarter. Panthers leading seven to nothing on the Jake Armstrong touchdown. Another handoff to Faye, off the right side. Nice run, picks up five yards, second down and five for Westwood. Up front for the Panthers, number 51, David Harding, number 57, Will Crowley, number 72, Scott Elliott, number 75, Riley McGettigan. Your linebackers, are Alex Kelly, 53 and 55, John Canal, 17, Sean Keast, the sophomore. Cornerbacks, DeZindelet and Armstrong with Seymour and Gimblet back at the safety spot. Hand off to Fay. He's yeah. hit right away by Scott Elliott, making the big hit. That's a nice job by Big Scott Elliott and that defensive line. And, you know, they're going to have to take control of the game now here and, and, and outplay the, the, uh, the Westwood offensive line. And the other thing is now, Tom, you know, as you said earlier, the running the ball, you know, you've, you've got to – they haven't done that well against, against the run, uh, with by running the ball, I mean. So got to make sure that you keep that out of the game tonight. Also starting at linebacker number four, Ryan Benko. So third down and five for the Wolverines. Now you watch this left side over here. Watch Reed Wilson come to this, come to his left again. And there he is. Wilson rolls out, fires. Intercepted. Intercepted by Jake Armstrong. Nice return into Westwood territory. Panthers will have first and ten at the Westwood 40. Yeah, I talked about that a little bit earlier, Tom. That you know, I, I saw that in the Pembroke game. The same thing is that. Um, Reed Wilson is a, is a good quarterback, no doubt about it. He's, he's a good quarterback. But he send, tends sometimes to either try and force the ball in, which he tried to do there, and some, or sometimes he'll throw the ball over, to, you know, over his receiver's head, which also sometimes can cause interceptions. But uh, nice job there by, uh, by Jake Armstrong. He's right on the spot. And that's a tough catch to make, too. Wilson only threw six interceptions last year. He's, mm -hmm. That was his third on the season tonight. Didn't throw any last week against Norwood. And the Panthers come out in war. Number 27, Tristan Benson on one side. They pitch to him. He goes off the left. And he gets, gets tied up at the line of scrimmage. Now, Trist Tristan Benson, freshman, uh, good explosiveness. You know, he's got some good speed. He can read his blockers very well. He had a really nice touchdown against Lincoln Sudbury last week. Yes, he did. Four rushes for 22 yards and the touchdown. Second down, 11. This time they pitch it the other way to 21. Fahey and Dwayne Fah Fahey, the junior, is out across the inside the 30-yard line and a Panther first down. Well, it's good to see Dwayne back in the game. And, you know, he hasn't been able to play these first couple of games. And... He's a guy that they've really counted on in, in that uh, offensive backfield. Panthers quick to the line. They go to Fahey again. Bounces it inside. 
Keeps his feet, gets down inside the 20, close to the 15-yard line, and another Panther first down. And if you watch what he did right there, what he did is he waited for that block to develop. He just gave a little step to the left, waited for that block to develop, and once it did, he was able to cut off to his right a little bit and make some good yardage. Should point out Dylan Ibbotson, number 32, in at the fullback spot, making some nice blocks in front of the play. So first and 10. Ball at the 15. Naughton pitches it to Fahey. There it is. There it tries is. to pick a spot, but there was no, no spot there for number 21. Sometimes you look for that crease, Jay, and there's just nothing there. Well, they got big number 77, best in the middle of, the, of their defensive line. He's, a, he's just a big, good player. I, I saw him make a few decent plays against Pembroke, so the kid can definitely play, and he's going to you know, bunch up that middle a little bit. So that's why I say if you work the outsides a little bit more, it might have a more success. Inside handoff to Benson. Benson breaks one tackle, keeps his feet, spinning inside the five-yard line. The Panthers close to another first down. Yeah, that was like the old crossbuck play, and, and uh, he was able to, they, they faked, faked the one, and they brought uh, Tristan Benson across, and he was able to uh, not just use his speed, but he has some little bit of power in those legs, too. He was Clock running with 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. Panthers first and goal. Pitches to Fahey. No place to go. And he's tackled for a loss back to the six. Let's see where they mark it. Actually, they're gonna give him forward progress. So it's gonna be second and goal from the five. Ball's on the ground. And it's Westwood ball. So the Panthers, after taking advantage of a Westwood turnover, got, got it inside the red zone, but have turned it over to the Wolverines with five seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, it's great to have long drives, and it's great to eat up the clock and everything, but one thing long drives do is they have a lot of plays, and, you know, you keep having more and more plays. Something, something can go wrong, but... That was Hollis, and I think when they proved that right there, though, with that drive is the offensive line, they can dominate um, this ball game if they, uh, you know, when they get the ball back, they can keep running out of the war offense. Five seconds left in the first quarter. Hollis up 7 nothing. So Antonucci and Murray to the left of the formation. Turn around, handoff. Westwood back tackled at the line of scrimmage. And that was uh, Colin Fay. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter with the Panthers leading the Wolverines 7 0. And it's time for Coach's Corner, brought to you by HollistonFootball.com. All Panthers all the time. And Coaches are in Ken Dunn's History of Holliston Football book, mm -hmm. Jay. Just so many nuggets about that. The event, book signing event in Holliston is going to be on Saturday, October 14th, yeah, that's, 1 to 4 p.m. That's a change date. Remember that. It's, right. it's October 14th. At 1 to 4 p.m., Coach Cato, Coach Kiley, uh, Ken Dunn, H-Cat will be down there, Tom it'll, and Jay. It'll be at Fisk's. And Fisk General Store. John Paul Trenary donating $5 from every book to HABA, the mm -hmm. uh, Holliston Boosters Association. And so just going to be a great time uh, to talk about uh, some Panther football on Saturday, October 14th. Right. What you want to do is go buy your book now at Fisk's and then bring it to the signing. And if you just can't get down there before then, John will hold the, it and John he'll have everybody you. sign it for you. Yep. Well, a little bit of trivia we had last week, Jay, as Tristan Benson, the freshman, scored. I said, asked the question, who was the last freshman to score a touchdown for the Holliston Panthers? 
And I said Jake Frechette in 2008, he had two touchdowns. Somebody else in the crowd that heard us said, what about Joe Belomo? Well, Joe was a freshman in 2011. He rushed 20 times for 133 yards, but no touchdowns. But in 2012, Alex Mitchell scored a touchdown yeah. against Dover Sherburn in a 40 to nothing win. So all those little nuggets you can sift you out uh, of the Holliston Panther football history book. So second down and 10 for Westwood. Back on their own nine-yard line, or our own six-yard line. Reed Wilson, a pass across the middle, connects to McDonald, and a Westwood first down. Nice pass, nice catch, and a really nice call down there. You know, they opened up the middle of the field and send the uh, tight end across the, the middle. I always go to the tight end when you yeah. need, well, you know, need, a, need a certain catch there. Yep. Also from the history book, this is the 51st meeting between these two teams. Westwood leading the series 30 to 19 and one tie. So first down and 10. Wilson with the wind at his back. Hands off. And Colin Fay, or that's Antonucci, was in at the tailback yeah. spot. I, I saw the two, and I thought it was 32, but it was 22. And that's the first time we've seen him at the tailback spot this well, season. Yeah, and he will run out of that, that tailback spot. You know, they, they put him everywhere. They're going to use him everywhere. But this play, play may be coming back. Let's oh, see. Oh, we got a, got a flag on the play. It's, sometimes it's either hold or block in the back in this situation. And that's what it is, block in the back. So that'll negate the gain, and they will do first down over again. Well, even in the win last week against Norwood, I did see seven penalties against yeah. against Westwood. And there were a few in the uh, the first game against Pembroke too. So break for the Panthers. So it'll be first down and twelve for Westwood as we're just underway here in the second quarter. You know, this this is a uh, a game where we talk about how many times mistakes, you know, we've already had two turnovers, a couple penalties now, and, and uh, you know, neither one of these teams, uh, uh, is, I don't think, is as strong as they were in the last few years, so they, neither of these teams can afford to make a lot of mistakes. Wilson hands off to Antonucci off the left side. But this time the Panthers stop number 22 for a loss on the play. That'll bring up third down and 15. Yeah, like I said the, at the beginning of the broadcast time, you really have to key on him. And if, if you're even putting two people on him, take him out. You know, it's the old Bill Belichick thing. All the, all the Patriots know what Bill Belichick does. You know, his, his theory is I'm going to take away the best player on the team and then make everybody else beat me. And that's what you really kind of have to do here. Actually, second down and 15. Antonucci at the tailback spot behind Reed. Split receivers to both sides of the formation for Westwood. Wilson hands off to Antonucci, tries the right side. Sneaks away from a couple of Panthers and heads back towards the Panther bench. Finally wrestled out of bounds, but not until he picks up 20, maybe 25 yards. I told you that you really, really have to key on him. You know, you could take both your outside men, uh, take your two outside backers, whatever, key on him because he does have that, that innate uh, ability to see the whole field. He can make the cuts, and he's very intelligent. He knows, you know, all these Antonucci's have been like this. They're, they're really, <laughs> well, we really good running. Number 27, runners, you know? Rob Antonucci saw him for three years. Panthers chasing him yeah. around the field. Just a great player for Westwood. And that's going to be first and 10 at the Westwood 45-yard line. And that might possibly be the, the longest run of the year for them. It is. Nice, nice tackle right there. That was a handoff right to Faye. 
And number 34 is tackled for right at the line of scrimmage. So second down and 10 for Westwood. Tackled by Jacob Harding. No gain on the play, second and 10. Also oh, coming up on uh, eight minutes to go in the first half. Hollison leading 7-0. And Jake Armstrong touchdown. Wilson comes over from Coach Pindell with the play. New tailback, number 32, Dominic Huff. Hand off to Huff, big hit by Kelly. Alex Kelly, the senior captain, and stopped him at the line of scrimmage. And you know, you wonder if there's a series of plays that they're, that they're running where they will go back somehow against the grain on this because right now, every time that, that back comes across to look like a blocker, they're just kind of going between the tackles. And of course, it worked the one play for Antonucci, but other than that, it hasn't worked much at all. So I'm wondering if there's some kind of a reverse that they run off of that. Big third down for Westwood. Third down and 10. Clock running with 7.02 to go here in the first half. Panthers leading 7-0 on the Jake Armstrong 17-yard touchdown run. Antonucci back in the game behind Reed. Hand off to Antonucci off the left side. Panthers string it out, but Antonucci turns the corner, pushed out of bounds very close to a first down. And Tom, I, I'm going to keep saying it. You cannot let that happen. You have to understand when he's in there, especially in that running back position, he's going to get the ball. Well, you know, you, you can see him on film, Jay, but until you see him live and That's in person, that. how fast, fast is. The uh, Panthers are going to have to adjust here. Now they have the speed. Holl Holliston does have the speed to the outside to be able to do, it, to do the adjustment. Actually, Holliston pushed Antonucci out three right. yards before the first down. So it's going to be fourth and three. And they're going to call a timeout. Westwood's going to call a timeout here. Yeah. And we're going we're to take a break. All right, 637 left in the first half. Westwood with it. Fourth down and three. Panther defense looking to dig deep right here. Well, Antonucci is in the slot to the right of Wilson. Yeah, and I don't like these fourth and shorts. I really don't like these because a lot of times they turn into big plays. Wilson rolls right, looking deep, lets it go. And intended for Murray to Zindelet in great coverage right there. And Westwood turns the ball over on downs to Holliston with 6.29 to go in the first half. Excellent job by Anthony DeZendelet right there. And, you know, playing his man beautifully, one-on-one -on -one coverage down the field all the way with him. And, uh, you know, he put himself in a position where if that ball isn't thrown correctly, he would have a shot at it too. I'm guessing they had also had uh, Antonucci covered down the they middle. They did, yes. So good job by Holliston there. I was really kind of down. kind of surprised uh, at the call too, Tom, to throw that deep because he's been he's been throwing shorter, uh, coming across the field to Antonucci or his deep or his off uh, or his tight end. All right, they come up to the line of scrimmage in war. Inside handoff is to Benson. Benson steps out of a tackle. It's a foot race. He's pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So there was that uh, little yeah. cross buck play working again. That was, and, and you know, Tristan Benson, you know, I, I, we saw him in Franklin. We saw him in, uh, in Lincoln Sudbury. And, you know, he's, he's, he's a guy who really, again, as I said last week, if he keeps his head in the game and keeps practicing and keeps working with these coaches, he could be the next really good one for Holliston. So first and 10 at the Westwood 30. Hand off to Fahey. Works his way down the line. Finally finds a little bit of daylight and moves forward for three yards. Got to test those outsides, Tom. You got to keep testing those outsides. You got to run inside once in a while to keep them honest. But you got to test the outside of that uh, defense. Actually only a gain of two, second and eight for Holliston. 5.55 left to go, the clock running in the first half. I want to mention the other tight end, number 44, Connor Mulvaney up front. For Holliston, 
There's the handoff to Fahey on the jet play. He sneaks away from a tackle. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe picks up another, actually picks up another three yards. So it'll be third down and five. Great, great balance by Fahey. He kind of lost his balance a little bit. And to, and to be able to go full steam like that forward, put your hand down and correct yourself and get up and run, that's a very, very tough thing to do. And he was also keeping his feet moving, Jay. That's how right. he got out of that tackle. So marks that you see in good runners, keeping the feet moving, keeping the hand, to keep the balance. Got those extra yards. We got a timeout on the field. We'll take a break. So third down and five for the Panthers. 5-10 to go in the first half. They lead seven to nothing. But now they're close to the red zone, want to get more. They line up in the spread formation. Benko rolls right. Chased out of the pocket, turns the corner, steps out of bounds. He's got a first down. So Ryan Benko using the quick feet there, Jay. Good job, and he got again. He gets to the outside, and I, I, I keep telling you this time that that's that's where, that's where you can make some yardage on this team. Benko has rushed coming into this game 19 times for 77 yards, a 4.1 average. And that really didn't look like it was a designed play either. That looked like it was he was looking for somebody downfield and couldn't find him. So first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Panthers will stay in the spread. Banco looks right, lays it up. Touchdown. Touchdown, Panthers! Now I'm going to guess that's Jake Armstrong on that side, number five. But I, I did not see through the rain who had caught that ball. Did you pick that up, Lise? It was, Bank, it was Armstrong. So Banco to Armstrong works. I saw a couple, again, the Pembroke game again. I saw a couple of those, what would you call 50-50 balls being thrown up? I have Mulvaney here, get the kick first. The ball is up. The Tomaselli snap, the Benko hold, the Mulvaney kick. And with 4.55 to go in the first half, the Panthers are on the board again, leading Westwood 14 to nothing. What I was talking about, Tom, they, they call those 50-50 balls. And what a 50-50 ball is, you get the ball up high enough where you think your man is going to be able to win the, um, the jump on the jump ball. And I saw a couple times that happened. The Pembroke guys did it, and uh, Jake Armstrong did it right there for Hollison. Puts him up 14 to nothing. 4.55 left to go in the first half. And uh, that's switch. They, they, they came out of the war offense and went right to the passing offense. Banco was able to come in, use his feet to get a first down, and use his arm to get a touchdown. Coming into this game, Ryan Banco was 12 of 32 for 203 yards and two touchdowns. So that's his third touchdown of the season. Jake Armstrong uh, with his third touchdown catch on the season and the sixth touchdown of his Panther career. Well, I think I remember that play back from uh, seven on seven up at Ashland High yeah. School. Those two were working on that. Mulvaney's kick comes down at the 18 yard line. Antonucci going sideline to sideline. Finally clipped up by number 33 of the Panthers. Uh, that's McKay Crichton. The junior transfer from Illinois. I want to tell you, that was a huge play because if he got back outside, if, if Anthony Jones had to break that tackle and get back outside, he had a lot of green in front of him, and he's a tough kid to catch from behind. So Westwood will have the start with the ball on their own 27-yard line. 4.43 to go in the first half. All right, it's up to the defense now to, you know. Find out where number 22 is, and he's at the him. tailback spot. Contain him. There's a timeout. we got a timeout on the field, and we're going to take a quick break. All right, Westwood back at the line. Antonucci at the tailback spot. 
Wilson has a word with him. First and 10. Fake to Antonucci. Wilson looks downfield, but no place to go. Keast got a piece of him, number 17. Well, I'll tell you, Sean Keast is really making a name for himself with uh, with his defensive play, and he did a really nice job there of sticking with that tackle and bringing down Reed Wilson for, so for a loss, too. Loss on the play of about five, so to bring up second down and 15. Looked like Panther, the Panthers were bringing everybody on that play. Well, they, they brought Keast off the edge. That was one guy they bought in... Uh, He's, like I said, he's, he's doing a nice job, Tom, and he's one of these guys that can really sniff out the ball. And the big thing is he gets to where he should be and he can make the tackle. Wilson rolls white right and has to just throw it away because Keast came in off the weak side and uh, was putting pressure on Number nine. Well, the the offensive coaches, uh, the defensive coaches have found something there that's just allowing um, Keys to come off that line. And uh, like I said, I I love watching the watching him play. He's a uh, good, you know, he, smart, intelligent, quick, and again, he can tackle. And that that's a big thing. When you get in there, you can get in there all you want, but if you don't make the tackle and finish the job, it's not any good. But you wonder if that was just a read play, Jay, with with Wilson rolling away from him immediately. He knows. You know, yeah. taking away half just the go. field, so just go. Yep. But you got to have the speed to put some pressure on. He certainly right. did right there. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first half. Third down and 15. All right, and it's going to be. And we got another timeout two. on the field. No, I don't know. There's a flag here. Oh, there's a flag yeah. on the far side? Yeah, it's against Westwood. Delay a game. So that's going to back it up and make this a third down and 20. So Holliston cause it, maybe causing uh, Westwood to make a mistake right there. Well, one of the things is the quarterback, Wilson, has to come over all the way over to um, get the play call every time. Then he's going back, and then he's got to talk to the team, and then they got to get them all set up. So it's taking some time to do that. Antonucci split out right, wide right in this formation. Wilson back, looks down the middle. Antonucci, one-handed try, no good. And it's in, yeah. falls incomplete. That's yeah, going to that, force Westwood to punt. That was kind of a lucky play for Holliston as, as somehow – if. He, Benko was either tripped or he slipped and fell. And, uh, you know, Seymour was right there to, uh, to take over for him. But uh, nice job by the defense on that, that play, especially Sean Keast. McQuarrie back to punt. Low punt. McQuarrie in trouble. Panthers. Fumble. And the ball's on the ground, recovered by Holliston. Who's that number... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's, there might be a, let's see. What, that was recovered by number 33. Huh? Oh, calling it an incomplete pass. Oh, it's a pass, I because see. Because McQuarrie was able to throw the ball in desperation. Not intentional grounding? Well, Get there's the nobody there. Get the rule book out, Jay. <laughs> there's nobody there, and... Uh, that should be intentional grinding, but we'll take it where it is. The bottom line is the Panthers are in the red zone. 3.28 to go in the first half. 14 to nothing. Lead over Westwood, and Panther offense is excited right now. But you've really got to take advantage of this, Tom. Naughton looking in for the signal. It looks, looks like, like the Panthers aren't quite ready. Well, it's official timeout here. I Oh, they're discussing, he's discussing the placement. Kylie probably not happy with that incomplete pass call. But we've got a timeout, so we'll take a break. The Panthers come out for war. Ball's on the 17-yard line. First and 10, 328 to go in the first half. Quarterback sneak by Henry, not a big push up the middle. 
and Naughton is all the way inside the 10 to the six yard line. This offensive line, Tom, I told you this earlier, they came out this week and after what happened last week in Lincoln Sudbury, they come out and I'm sure Coach Perry started this and between him and his offensive lineman, they went to Coach Conley and said, run, run, run. Let us not pushing people around and they're doing a heck of a job of it right now. First and goal from the six and then they go back to the quarterback sneak. And Naughton is forward for a yard. Second down and goal from the five. We're down and under just three minutes to go, plenty of time. But it'll be second and goal from the five. Seymour to the left, Armstrong to the right. Seymour gets the pitch, right side, cut back. Touchdown, Panthers! Brad Seymour with the first touchdown of his Panther career. Well, I, I talked a minute ago about the, the way that Tristan Benson was able to follow his blocks and wait wait till that play developed, then follow your block, wait for the opening, and that's exactly what uh, Brad Seymour did right there. He started coming across, waited for that play to develop, and that offensive line right now, Tom, is playing out of their mind. They made a nice, nice good size opening for him. He was able to cut back, use his cutback capability, and score the touchdown. Kick is up and good. And with two minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first half, the Panthers lead Westwood 21 to nothing as Brad Seymour goes in from five yards out. Brad Seymour, what a story he's been so far this year, Jay. He's been doing it on offense, defense, carrying the ball, uh, receiving it. The thing I want to point out, coming into this game, he was leading the Panthers with 340 all-purpose yards but hadn't made it to pay dirt until just now. Well, he deserves he deserves every bit of that too, and that that great run down in um, Lincoln Sudbury added a lot to uh, to his situation too. But I but I'll tell you, Tom, this uh, this offensive line right now, this line is the story of of the game. Now, right here, remember, Wester gets the ball coming out of the halftime. So, you know, what you want to stop here is what they call the old double-double. You, you're familiar with that, right? You don't right. want them to score back-to-back -back here. So this is a big defensive series for Holliston. Two thirty-four left to go in the first half. Holliston up 21 nothing. Mulvaney's kick is going to bounce inside the 20 and out of bounds. And so, and you know when you have that'll be a penalty against Hollis, and let's see if they're going to make him kick over. When you have an Antonucci back there, that's not that's not so bad to you know give them the ball at the uh, is it the thirty that they get it or the thirty five? They get it at the thirty unless they have him kick again, but it looks like they're going to take the thirty yard line. Well, you know the other thing too is you get you get decent field position at the thirty. You know, is it the thirty or? The or the 35. Are they going to make him kick it again? What are they doing here? <laughs> we have not seen any indication from the referees. Oh, he may just be holding the ball to keep it dry. They just okay, hold it so keep it, it dry. is going to be at the 30, first and 10. But I, but I was going to say, with the, with, the, with the weather here, you know, a, another kick could be fumbled and everything. So Westwood sends three receivers to Reed Wilson's right. One of them is Antonucci. He's in the middle. Wilson rolls right, pressure coming, ball up, and Gimblet and Dezindelet were there. Neither one could come down with it. Oh, I that, couldn't that just see got it. tipped at the last minute by Antonucci. I couldn't see it from here, but I will bet you that Anthony Dezindelet's eyes were just wide open. It was coming, was right, coming to him. right to him. Two twenty-seven left to go. So there they got the good double coverage on number 22. Second down and 10. You might want to run a blitz off the left side of your defense right here. Trips to the right. Here comes Sean. Oh, that's, a, that's five yards. That's five yards. False start. So it'll be second down and 15 after the penalty. And you're watching Sean Keast here, and he did come over from this left side. He was going to try to, if, if, if uh, Reed Wilson, the cornerback, wants to keep 
rolling to his right, which he should want to do if he's a, a right-handed uh, passer, you know, he, he just started coming in a little bit from the uh, from the defensive left side, which is the offensive right side, well, and uh, he was looking for to be all by himself one-on-one -on -one with Reed. Well, we've seen it before. If you're going to roll away from trouble, you really got to roll away from That's trouble. Right. But Keast with some speed can uh, track him down. So second down and 15 for Westwood. Wilson looks left, intended for Murray, incomplete. Coverage by Ryan Benko, number four. And now you got a situation. Here's the, here's the problem now. You got third and 15. If you don't get a first down here, Coach Kiley, if, if, even if you run the ball, will call a timeout and uh, give Hollison a potential shot at another uh, chance at an, another touchdown. But first, you got to have them make, make this down here. Antonucci split to the right. Wilson straight drop goes left. High throw, incomplete. Yep. And that brings up fourth down. Well, just like I said, Jay, yep. Panthers scored with 234. Only 18 seconds came off the clock. Right, and I, I had talked a little bit earlier about how um, sometimes Reed Wilson will throw the ball very high, and that's, that's what he did there. A little bit understandable on a night oh, where yeah, you're, yeah. you're worried about the grip on the ball. I mean, it's not pouring rain, but it's, it's it everything's matter. wet. It's soaked. That ball is soaked. And a snap is high. McQuarrie in trouble. Scrambles away and gets an amazing kick away. What a play by McQuarrie. And that's going to come to a rest at the Panther 25-yard line. Well, there could have been another disaster for Westwood. Well, if I'm a college scout and I see that, I want that kid on my team. <laughs> that was not just a great play, the presence of mind, but coming across the field and kicking sideways like that, how, how far is that punt? That's a, that's a huge punt right there. Right. It went from the, went from the 25 to the 25. So that's 50 yards. Do the math there. Yeah. <laughs> So we're down to a minute 59 to go here in the first half. Panthers up 21 to nothing. And if they don't, if the Panthers don't score, you better give that one to McQuarrie because uh, that was a heck of a play. Panthers are lined up in their spread offense. Benko at the quarterback spot. Straight drop, draw, gets caught around the waist. Big number 77, Colin Best with the sack. Well, Col a five. Colin Best is a good one. I told you about him uh, earlier in the game, Tom. He does a really nice job. In He's a Tri-Valley League All-Star yeah. last year as a yeah. junior. Yeah, and he'll, he'll be one this year, too. He, he really awesome. plugs up that, that middle, but not, not just a big guy plug up. He can also move a little bit left and right and make some tackles like he just did on Benko. Two receivers to both sides of the formation. Benko, straight drop, steps away. Tries to throw underneath to Ryan. Incomplete. That'll stop the clock with a minute 16 to go. Yeah, now the shoe's on the other foot here is that, you know, if Hollison doesn't get the first down, I'm not sure how many timeouts uh, Westwood has left, but if Hollison doesn't make a first down here, uh, Westwood might put themselves in a position to get some good field position on a punt. One sixteen left to go in the first half. 21 nothing Holliston. All right, twin receivers to both sides. Ibbotson steps up to the right. Benko rolls right. Got some room, fires just a little low intended for Armstrong, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, and I think that with, with those two passes, they were both low to open guys. I, I think is uh, an issue with Ryan's. Uh, capability to, to throw this ball that's really, really wet now. And you see it from both quarterbacks. Well, Wilson was high and Benko was low. Yeah. So Topher Ryan drops back to kick the punt. We got a dangerous. Oh. We got a penalty here. Uh, Too many men on the like field. So. Let's see who is against. So there were too many Wolverines on the field, so it'll be fourth down and ten. Twelve men on the field, five yard 
Jake Antonucci drops back to midfield to receive the kick. Coach Kylie wants a timeout to talk it over. We'll take a break. Panthers line up to punt the ball with a minute 11 to go in the first half, leading 21 to nothing. Ryan's kick takes a Wolverine bounce, comes all the way back to the 35 yard line. So good field position for Westwood with a minute three to go in the first half. And again, we go back to the McQuarrie punt and that is what set this whole thing up for Holliston. What a, what a great job he did. You know, you, you always forget, everyone's looking at statistics for offense and defense. You always forget that special team. There's always a play in there, the special team it will either do something well or do something poorly, and it you know results in the score here or there. And in that sense, uh, there was a great punt by uh, McCory giving Westwood great field position. You're exactly right, Jay. So well, 22 Antonucci is split wide to the right. First and ten Wolverines. Look for a fade here over, over on the right-hand side for uh, Antonucci. Wilson steps back. Chased by the Panthers, steps up out of trouble. Tuck it away, tuck it, tuck it away. Picks up like five or six yards. Clock, Clock keeps running ticking. with 45 seconds to go. Westwood had a pair of plays called, so second down and five for the Wolverines. Wilson goes to the center, Ooh. and that was intended intended as a center screen, and Mitch Gimblet, number 24, almost picked it off. Clock stops with 26 seconds to go in the first half. Well, obviously, you've got two downs here to make the, at least these five yards. But the other thing is, too, you're fighting the clock. So you don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of time left to run many plays. Now, you could run a draw out of this with Antonucci. So let's see where he lines up. Is Westwood out of timeouts? Probably. Not sure. Uh, I don't know. Nope, Sorry. they're going to they're gonna bring Antonucci out here. And again, I'm, gonna lo I'm looking for that fade. Down here in the right-hand corner of the end zone. So three receivers to the right. Antonucci all the way wide right. Wilson looks back left. Caught. Colin Fay with the catch, but he's tackled inbounds. Clock is running. With 17 seconds to go. And I guess they don't have any timeouts because the clock keeps running. Clock stops as oh, they, no, they move did the chains. Oh, they did have a timeout. And Westwood, Westwood a timeout. takes a timeout and we'll take a break. So 17 seconds to go in the first half. Antonucci split, split wide to the right. Three receivers to Wilson's right. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Wilson goes left, fade pass, toss it up. And it's no good, intended for Murray. Only five ticks off the clock, 12 seconds to go. Clock stopped, second down and 10 from the 11. So now the question is, as a defensive coordinator, do you want to come after him and maybe have a chance of sacking him and you know having the He's clock run out? Or do you want to keep your guys back there, your defensive backs and linebackers back there and prevent any touchdown passes? It's a, it's a little quandary I, for a defensive coordinator. I think you stay back, Jay. W Wilson usually... He lets the ball go pretty quickly. He's usually on a two count, and he's got the ball out of his hands. Let's see. Wilson steps back, fires to the goal line. Whoa. Touchdown, Westwood. Well, you had a little bit of both there. Holliston coming out, coming after uh, Reed Wilson, and it was a uh, really nice uh, uh, blitz on Wilson. But like you said, Tom, he gets a ball away so quickly that they were able to uh, get, get the ball in between two defenders and score the touchdown. Six seconds left in the first half. And Westwood looks like they're going to... They'll go for one. 
Yeah, they've got McQuarrie out yeah. there. Wilson, the holder. Bad snap. Block. Ball low, kick it, on ball. the ground. Dezindelet picks it up. See if he can find some green. We got a flag in the on the field. And Dezindelet with some green in front of him. Cuts it back. And finally down at the at the 45. So a lot of excitement there, but now they're gonna, referee's gonna come back and talk about this. Yeah, well there was, there was, there was, a, there was a block in the back, back in the, uh, down in the end zone. So with four seconds left in the first uh, half, Hollison leads 21-6. Nice block there by uh, block kick by Holliston. So it's a safety. Oh, they're going to safety. And it's a <laughs> so two points for Westwood. The, that's called making yeah. two the hard way. Yeah, well. So with four seconds to go in the first half, the P Panthers' lead is cut to 21 to 8. Well, that's because the, uh, when the penalty occurs in the end zone, they give you a uh, safety on that, so. That's a wild one. For Reed Wilson, that's his fifth touchdown pass of the season, first touchdown on the season for Mark James. Oh, it's not right. two, it's no, only one. Well, it's a one point got safety. everybody scrambling into their, uh, into their record books. A one point safety, and the other thing that happens is, and I thought, this was a little strange because it was six seconds when the when the touchdown was scored. They did put it back up on the clock, so now there's six seconds back up on the clock. 21-7, Holliston leads with six seconds left in the uh, first well, half. Well, we've had some barn burners over the years, Jay. No yep. question about that. Uh, also want to point out this is the seventh time that these two teams have met, not on Turkey Day. Holliston yeah. has a 4-2 to two lead over Westwood in those games. This is also the 11th game being played here at Flayhive Field. Flayhive opened in 2006, and the record is five and five, each team with five wins. And you know, you, you take the uh, take these teams and all the stuff they've done back and forth and everything, but probably the most important game was uh, one of the great games of all time when Holliston uh, won in the playoffs. No, that no, that I mean, was the regular season, regular season. The that's double right, the regular overtime, season, double game, overtime here. game here, and it was amazing a, it was a game, great game. And then Holliston did win on the, the uh, when they played in the playoffs. Ball skitters covered up at the 27 yard line. Five seconds to go here in the first half. Let's see how Holliston plays this now. You you know, you never know what happens. They're going to play. Uh, Westwood will play a big prevent defense, but you know I, what I like in these is uh, the old hook and ladder play. Well, the Panthers are going to line up for war. Or oh, victory. Or, uh, and yeah, Naughton take takes a knee. a knee. And that'll do it. So the teams head to the locker room with the Holliston Panthers leading the Westwood Wolverines 21-7. to And now it's time for loose in the halftime lowdown. Thanks, Tom. The score at halftime, Holliston 27, Westwood 7. Kind of a weird first half there. Uh, we talked a lot about um, rushing yards and who would win that battle be before the game. Uh, so far, so good for the Panthers. They are leading the Wolverines in rushing yards, 137 to 38. Overall, Panthers with 163 yards of offense, 95 for the Wolverines. That also includes 26 yards passing for Holliston, 57 yards through the air for Westwood. Holliston quarterback Ryan Benko is 2 of 4 for 26 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Uh, leading rusher for the Panthers uh, in the first half is Jake Armstrong. He has 37 yards and a touchdown, but it's a very balanced rushing attack from the Panthers uh, in this first half. Uh, Brad Seymour, Dwayne Fahey, Jake Armstrong, Tristan Benson, 
all with uh, 20 yards or more in the first half. Brad Seymour also has a rushing touchdown. Uh, leading receiver for the Panthers is Jake Armstrong. He has 18 yards receiving, including a touchdown reception. For the Wolverines, quarterback Reed Wilson, 4 of 13 for 57 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Leading rusher for the Wolverines is Jake Antonucci. He has 32 yards on four carries. Uh, touchdown reception for the Panthers went to Mark James Jr. Defensively for the Panthers, Alex Kelly, David Harding, and Riley McGettigan all checking in. They're the leading tacklers. They have two tackles apiece uh, recorded. Uh, Mitchell Gimblet and uh, Anthony Zindlet with two big pass breakups as well in the first half. For more stats and information on the Holliston Panthers, you can follow us on Twitter at HCATFootball, and that's the lowdown. All right, thank you, Los. Scoring summary. Panthers on the board first in the first quarter. Jake Armstrong from 17 yards out. Extra point was good by Mulvaney. And the Panthers on the board Late in the uh, second quarter, Armstrong from Benko. Benko's third touchdown of the season, Armstrong's fourth uh, of the season. Extra point made it 14 to nothing. And then Brad Seymour, just two minutes later, went in from five yards out, his first touchdown on the year. Extra point was good, 21 to nothing. Hey, and then a little craziness as the Panthers' punt was short and gave Westwood the short field with just six seconds to go. Reed Wilson to Mark James and a crazy extra point attempt ended it with a penalty, a Panther penalty in the end zone. Was, they gave the safety call, but it was only worth one point. Yep. That's a rule that, boy, you got to dig deep for that one, I guess. Huh? Got to dig deep. So Colin Fay and Jake Antonucci deep for Westwood. 21 to seven here as we start the second half. Mulvaney's got it te teed up, but then a uh, little gust of wind takes, takes it over. Mulvaney's kick comes back to Faye, picks it up on a bounce at the 10. Nice hit by Holliston at the 25, 26 yard line. And Panthers really need to, need to get a stop here to start the second half. Yeah, they should, you know, we, we talked about how the, the double up is really a, a tough thing. And you know, they, they were able to pull off the, the score with six seconds left. Uh, for the touchdown at the end of the first half, and now they come out and get another shot here. Now the good news is even if they score, Holliston is still up by a possession. But you're right, Tom. This this is where the defense wants to come out and kind of uh, reestablish field position for Holliston and give their offense a, a shot at scoring. So Antonucci at the tailback spot. Got to keep our eyes on number 22. Wilson handoff to Antonucci. Sprints wide, and the Panthers are ready for him. And Antonucci is stopped for a one-yard loss. Played that perfectly, like I said earlier in the game. What you want to do is you want to contain him, number one. But number two, you've got to have other players coming up to make that tackle because his, he has the capability of making that, that stop and cut on a dime, and he can cut up field. And if there's nobody there to tackle him, he's going to get some long runs. Panthers did a great job against Reed Wilson in the first half. He was just 4 of 13. Coming into this game uh, last year, uh, Reed Wilson was 33 of 64 for 285 yards, six touchdowns, and no interceptions. Not well, too much time again. Yeah, we got to delay a game. So that's going to back it up, make it second down and 16 to go. So a chance for the Panther defense here. Second down and 17 from the Westwood 19. Antonucci at the tailback spot. 
This two is where Hall, split. I'm, I'm sorry, Tom. This is where Hollister might want to get a little aggressive and come after Reed Wilson. Wilson out into the flat to Antonucci. Nice catch, but a nice tackle from the linebacker spot. That was number 53, Alex Kelly, with the clean hit and tackle. And we've talked about Alex, you know, what a great job he did, you know, came, coming into the year. He gave up his position as a running back to, to play, uh, you know, in the offensive line. But uh, one thing they wanted to make sure of is that he got his time in at linebacker because he's a good one. So gain of one, third down and 15 for Westwood. A big play for both teams right here. Hollison looking for field position, and uh, Westwood looking to keep the drive alive. Antonucci split wide. Here comes Holliston. Wilson got the blitz. Throws over. It looked like they were trying to get a screen going, but it's incomplete. And that's going to bring up fourth down and force Westwood to punt. Nice inside blitz by Holliston. And when you come up the middle, you know, I, I know you Patriots fans, you always talk about this. Everybody talks about <laughs> it. If you're going to after Brady, you want to go up the middle, right? You always want to get that push up the middle against a quarterback. And when he's, especially when he's going to throw a screen pass, when he's dropping directly back, nice job by the Holliston defense. Aquarius punt up into the wind. Comes down Seymour with the fair catch. Called for at the 44-yard line. Holliston with good field position, 8.41 to go in the third quarter, leading 21-7. Well, McQuarrie's a good one. You know, I got a little information on him, too. It looks like uh, some of the Ivy League schools are looking at him. And, uh, you know, good kid, smart kid. And, and uh, heck, of a, heck of a leg. And I, and I heard that he was, you know, we saw him kicking 45-yard uh, field goals here in warm-up. Not, not in practice, in warm-up. <laughs> not in practice. Panthers line up for war, first and ten. Pitch to... Fahey, he gets tackled up high and spun down by Murray, but not before he picks up five yards. So second and five for Holliston. Fahey looks really good tonight. Like I said, we had missed him the first couple of games. He's, I'm not sure if it, it, what the injury was, but he um, has come in and really Someone's given this team a lift on. along with Tristan Benson. So Benson too many on men on the, the right. Too many. Got too many. Oh. Timeout yep. on the field, and we'll take a break. Okay, 8.15 to go in the third quarter. Panthers leading 21 to 7, second down and five. Benson on the right, Fahey on the left. They pitch to Fahey. Nice block by Naughton. And Fahey fights his way across the 50. Let's see where they're going to put it. They're going to put it at the 47. That's going to bring up a third down and one. So nice gain by the junior running back. Nice gain, and with third and one, you've got, a, you've got two shots at this. You know, Hollison will, will go after this twice unless there's a penalty of some kind. Pitch to Fahey. Finds a nice little gap. Sneaks across the 45 for a Panther first down. You know, Fahey and Benson, they're not really big backs. I mean, Halston right now doesn't have what you would consider a really big, powerful back. But they are um, very quick, uh, very intelligent. You watch, you watch them read their blocks very well. So first and 10 at the Westwood 44. They go inside to Benson on the counter play. He gets to the 40 before he's stopped. So gain of four, second and six. And now Coach Kylie will switch out and bring in a fresh Armstrong and Seymour. Nice to have those pairs work in tandem, Jay. Yeah, it is because when you practice, you get to practice together and you get to learn everybody's uh, moves and how they react to different situations. Ibbotson moves to the left of the formation. Pitch to Armstrong. Nice block out in front of him. Tried to bounce it to the outside, didn't find much room. Well, what happened there is the, the, the Holliston defensive end did a nice job of containing him in. And, um, you know, Jake just cut up. It was Jake, right? Yeah. Jake, Jake, he cut off inside of that um, contain. I'm not sure if he could have gotten to the outside, but if he was able to get to the outside, he would have had a big gainer. 
So a third down and a long four for Holliston. They go to Armstrong again off the left side. He finds a little bit more room, keeps his feet, and he's very close to a first down. Yeah, and the mark is going to give him a first down here for Holliston. 6-0-2 left to go in this third quarter. You know, I just seven. noticed number 72 plays on that left side. Yeah, well, he's a big one. He's a good one. Senior, uh, junior, junior captain uh, Scott Elliott on that left side. Maybe a little extra push now and then. Great article in the paper about him, by the way. Really, really well written. Yeah, no, good for future for a lot of skew schools looking at, looking at him. So first and ten at the 34. We got a timeout on the field. We're gonna take a break. All right, 5:34 to go in the third quarter. Panthers come to the line first and ten at the Westwood 34-yard line. Had a nice drive from their own 44. Inside handoff on the counter play to Ooh. Ibbotson. Picks up a couple. There's a couple of uh, Westwood players there to, to make that tackle, but Hollison almost was able to make one block, and if they were able to make that block and take out both guys, which is very tough to do, by the way, uh, that might have been uh, the six points. Second down and eight for Holliston. Hand off to Fahey on the jet yeah. play, but nice job by Westwood. Murray came up strong and turned that play in. That was a great, that's exactly what you want to do, how to, how to defend that right there. They, they came up, as you said, turned it in, and uh, the tackle was able to be made. So now with third and 10, probably go to the spread offense. Benko will come in. 4.35 and the clock is running. 21-7, Holliston lead. Third down and 10, Banco hands it off on the sweep play. That's uh, Quinn, Kevin Quinn, number six. That's his first carry of the year. Picked up a couple. We're gonna mark it close, just inside the 30. So fourth down and four for Holliston. Well, clock running with three minutes and 50 seconds here in the third quarter. Panthers they, leading 21 to seven. What they do in a, a possible passing situation is Westwood moves the, the big man, um, Colin Best from, from the middle of the field. So you might be able to run the center of the field too. Benson looks to the corner of the end zone. He's got him. Touchdown Panthers. Brad Seymour with his second touchdown of the game. What a great call and a great pass and catch right there by Holliston. And a nice job. And, you know, I talked about Colin Best being, being taken out of there. I mean, you know, I, I saw Colin Best when playing against Pembroke was able to come up the middle and put some pressure on the quarterback. Well, they, they pulled him out there two um, plays ago, and uh, there was no pressure at all that time on uh, Benko. He made a nice pass to, uh, in fact, a beautiful pass under these conditions to uh, well, Seymour. Mulvaney's kick is strong and good. And with three minutes and 23 seconds left in the third quarter, the Panthers lead Westwood 28 to seven. Ryan Benko. Ryan Benko with his fourth touchdown pass of the season. Brad Seymour's first touchdown catch, his second of the game. And this, this, this second half has started just perfectly for the Panthers. Well, if you asked Coach Kylie to kind of prioritize what, what he would want to do, he'd obviously want to score first. He'd want to use up the clock, but he'd also want to prevent uh, um, Westboro from, uh, uh, Westboro, Westwood from scoring on that first, on their first series this half. Well, he did all three. He prevented West, um, Westwood from scoring. That's a check. He was able to take a lot of time off the clock. That's a check. And he was able to score a touchdown and get the extra point to go up by three possessions. 3.23 left to go in the third quarter. Hollison 28, Westwood 7. But again, you got a, the dangerous man back there. You got to make sure you make some good tackles here. Well, Vaney's kick. 
Boxed around by Faye right at the 10 yard line and that's gonna back up Westwood. You know, you, you've got the, uh, the wind and the rain coming right in your face there and uh, on top of everything else, it, it does make it a little tough to feel that ball down there. So once again, Hollis is in a situation here, Tom, where they're playing for field position and they want to, you know, make that stop. They don't want to give up anything here because they want to be able to get, uh, you know, another short field situation. Well, again, uh, you got to watch number 22. That's where they're that's where they're putting the ball. They've tried to hand it to him, try to get him on a screen pass last time. He's right to Reed Wilson's left. Wilson looking downfield, rolling right, feeling a little pressure, tries to feather it into double coverage, smartly threw it away. That is what a great job by that by that uh, defensive backfield, Tom. Uh, I think that was Wilson, Seymour over there. Wilson had some time back there, and, and he also created, was able to create more time for himself by rolling to the right, but it was a really nice job by the, those defensive backs to cut it out. And the other thing was they took away the um, screen pass here when um, Antonucci came out to the left, and uh, they weren't able to uh, go that way either. Antonucci still at the tailback spot. They hand it off to him. Bounces it outside. And just pushed out of bounds, but a, probably a gain of seven or eight. A gain of seven, bring up third down and three. We got a timeout on the field, we'll take a break. Well, the good news for Westwood is, and for everybody, is that Jake Antonucci's all right. But because he was hurt, they got to take him out of the game, I believe, for one play. And this is a really critical third down situation for third Westwood. Third down and three. Wilson looks right, fires right. Incomplete. And that's going to bring up a fourth down and three. And Coach Pindell is going to send out his punt team. 2.59 left to go in the third quarter. 28-7 Holliston. And again, a nice job by the defense, Tom. They were able to uh, get, get their offense this good field position again. Armstrong and uh, Seymour back. Seymour takes the kick at the 46. Got some room in front of him. And Brad Seymour brings it inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. What I think happened there was I think the Westwood team thought he, he was going to call a fair catch, and just they just kind of kind of didn't go down the field at full speed. Yeah. Down there? yeah, and uh, very, very wisely, uh, Seymour was able to, to uh, make, the, make the catch and go right up the middle for a for long yardage. Yeah, time out on the field. We're going to take a break. All right, Panthers with... Or Westwood with first and 10, 240. Oh, Panthers with the first and 10. Handoff is off to Fahey. Panthers run out of the spread formation. Fahey across the 25 to the 24. Kind of an interesting call. I figured with, with best out of the game that uh, Hollison would go right back to the war and attack the uh, middle of that uh, defensive line. you got to take what the defense That's gives you, right. Jay. Two minutes and 22 seconds in the third quarter. Clock running here. Banco. Oh, right Hands quick reverse. To Seymour. Great reverse. Turns the corner. <laughs> Touchdown, Panthers. That was that cross buck play with it. Well, they sent him for a jet, and they faked the jet, and everyone went to the jet, and the other guy just went. With, who was that? Was that Brad, Brad Seymour, Seymour with his third touchdown well, of the game? Welcome to the Brad Seymour coming out party. He's just really done a great job tonight. You said he's been doing this 
all year long, both offensively and defensively. Well, tonight, it was one of those things that stuck did. out in the stats. You see 340 all-purpose yards, and geez, the guy hasn't made the end zone yet, you know? Beautiful 25-yard run. Mulvaney's kick is up and good. So with a minute 53 to go in the third quarter, the Panthers are on the board again and extend their lead to 35 to seven. Brad Seymour with three touchdowns today. And like you said, Jay, that was a great call. That was really a great play. We haven't seen that play. You know, they've run it a couple of times tonight, but that, that jet, it just, everybody just went for the jet play and uh, he just stayed there and, Benko gave uh, gave the ball to Brad, and uh, he just finished it off. He really he really looks good running out of the out of the halfback position. He really, he really does. does. He really does. He looks good. Feeling, and you know, it's something that we see players they look good, and then they get more confidence. Yeah. They get more confidence. And uh, just it's it's just we've seen it for years with oh. those with those Panther runners. Give them a little bit of green. Give them some yep. room. Give them an inch. They can take a mile. And tonight, this, this give this offensive line a tremendous amount of credit tonight. They've really bounced back from the Lincoln Subway game, and they are really, really doing a great job. Mulvaney's kick back to Murray at the 10. Tripped up as he crosses the 25 to the 29-yard line. So a minute 45 to go in the third quarter, and the Panthers have started this second half just on fire, Jay. They got the three and out that they needed, got the ball back, got it in the end zone, got another three and out, mm -hmm. and another score. It's the short field, and field position makes makes such a big difference. Having that having a, that short field at, at Holliston. 145 left to go in the third. So they split Antonucci out to the right. Seymour moves over to cover him. Wilson looks, fires, complete. Wilson's pass complete to Durker. Durker, number 18 with the catch. Second down and five for Westwood. You know, at this, at this point, though, they they at the point in the ball game where they can't just keep taking short gainers. You're going to have to look downfield, and when they do, they usually look for Antonucci. Wilson again, Panthers dropping back, giving a little under. And that's another completion. Durker with the catch, and it's good for a first down. Clock running, one minute left to go in the third. This would go in no huddle. Wilson looks left this time. Connects. Nice little five yard completion there to John Hannon, number 28. A gain of six on the play. Second down and four from the Westwood 45. So second down and four for Westwood. Wilson down the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted. Intercepted by Holliston. And I think that was number 10 to Zindelet. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And Alex Kelly has given him the business. But the junior, the junior defensive back there with the nice pick. Well, he's been covering all night long. He's been covering him really tightly and uh that time it, it paid off, and once again, you know, Reed Wilson, you know, you get behind by this much, you're trying to force what you can, but he tried to force that ball in there, but uh, that was a nice catch again by DeZindelet, who had the uh, the offensive man right on him playing a defensive back, but Anthony was able to finish it off with a nice job. So the ten, I'm sorry, 10 seconds left in the third, Tom. Panthers will have first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. 
Benko at the quarterback spot. Quinn in motion, handoff to him on the jet play. Kevin Quinn keeping his feet, crosses the 45 to the 46 yard line. And that'll bring up a second down and two. But that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter. And it's time for this, this week, week in, in the, the Tri-Valley Tri League. League. Brought to you by HABA, raising Holliston Athletic Boosters Association, raising money to support all Panther varsity sports. Get your spirit wear at the concession stand to support Panther Nation today. Well, this is week number three in the Tri-Valley League, and this is where the league play starts. Medfield 2-0 is at Norton 1-1 on Saturday. Hopkinton 2-0 at Bishop Fian 0-2. Millis 1-1 at Dedham 1-1. Ashland 1-1 hosting Dover Sherburn. I heard that Dover Sherburn was ahead 10-0 at the half. Ooh. Upset brewing. Must be raining up there. Bellingham 2-0 hosts Medway 0-2. And, and Jay, we're talking about McQuer Nick McQuarrie of the Westwood Wolverines with a big foot look being looked at by colleges. There's another big foot from Holliston that's in the college ranks right now. Grant Buchanan? Grant Buchanan, number 47 for the Bentley Falcons, the sophomore. He is 4-for-4 four four in field goals and 8-for-8 eight eight in extra point attempts. Last year, he was 29-30 of 30 in PATs, which was number one in the division. Big weapon. So Panthers actually given a first down on that, on the turnover and the run. Handoff to Ibbotson and number 32. Touchdown, Panthers. Well, once I tell you, I'm not happy. I'm very happy for number 32. I am too. A nice job by him in, the, in that offensive line. And of course, the uh, this, well, this defensive line has been decimated for, for Westwood, but be that as it is, Hollison offensive line is just really playing amazingly well tonight. And these, those running backs are reacting to the holes, too, and it's nice to see Iverson get, be, get in there and get a touchdown. Mulvaney's kick is no good. Mm -hmm. But with 10.49 to go in the, third, in the fourth quarter, Panthers lead Westwood 41-7. to Ibbotson with his first touchdown of the season. Well, Jay, it's, it's early in the season. Dylan Ibbotson, the sophomore running back, has been doing an outstanding job doing all the dirty work. Mm -hmm. We've seen him do the dirty work as the fullback in this uh, war offense tonight. We saw it on uh, Millis. There was a big, touch, long touchdown run by Mike Nash. He was the one. I remember you called out, what a great block right. that was. It was number 32. And he's been doing the hard work between the tackles, so nice to see him break one for his first high school touchdown. Yeah, and by the way, he didn't just jump over the crowd for that one. He made a nice cut, and he went, and he used his speed to get all the way downfield. How long was that one, Los? 53 yards. 10.49 left to go in this ball game. Hollison, 41 Westwood seven. This is a game, you know, Tom, I mentioned in the beginning of the game, this is really a two gamer because you get the, the, the team that wins get the win, but they also get the tiebreaker if you should happen to tie. Scooped up by Faye inside the 15. Carries it across to the 24. Tackled by Kevin Quinn. Kevin's Number had a six. nice little game tonight. He, he has. Had some runs. Had a nice, I think he had a catch too. So, and a couple of tackles on yeah. specials. Well, it's good to see that the Panthers needed a bounce back game. You know how disappointed they were after that game in Lincoln Sudbury. Feels like they threw everything at the Warriors yeah. last Friday night, Jay, and it just didn't work. Tom, sometimes you play teams that are just better teams, and that's the way it is with uh, with Lincoln Subway this year. They have a it looks They've like a, a really, really good, good team. team. That was and, a you know, tip after, your hat game. Absolutely, you know, and sometimes that happens. But you're also playing a very strong opponent, and that helps you down the line. You know, we we had talked about how good hard run up the middle by Fay for six. I'm going to. 
the uh, you know we talked last week about how you know Coach Cali wants to play these really tough opponents in the, in his non-league schedule and. Uh, you know, it's games like this where it really starts paying off because you have had that experience. Second down and three for Westwood. Wilson hands it off to Faye, goes off the left side. Got the first down, puts his head and shoulders down, crosses the 35 yard line to the 37. Talked about at the beginning of the game how you know both of these teams are looking to see w really what kind of team they are. So this is this was a test for both of these teams, and uh, you know Holliston came here really ready to play and right out of the shoot, and uh, they've played well the whole game, both uh, actually in all three phases of the game. Number twelve, Matt Tomaselli in at free safety. Faye crosses the 40 to the 40, 41. Nine, 10 left to go in this ball game. Holliston up 41-7. Well, in fairness, Jay, also, I mean, we've just seen, you know, some tough injuries. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially, especially the Westwood line tonight. Yeah, they have, and they had, they had one coming in, and then they had these two tonight, and... Uh, you hate to see that. And you really do. Second down and seven. You know, you also like, one on the play. You wonder how uh, how Coach Kylie really handled this week. You know, sometimes. When, when games like that happen, uh, oh, looks like we got somebody down. We'll come back after this timeout. Okay, we're back. Third down and eight just for to, Westwood. Just to continue the, the thought, I would wonder how, how Coach Kyle and the coaching staff handled last week's game. If they, you know, if, if they said, let's forget about it and move on, or if they really look at it and said, you know, let's pick this stuff up and we come on, guys, we got to get going. We're a better team than this. Be interesting to see how they handle that. Well, there's always improvement, Jay. Oh, Ooh. nice job oh. there. He is Anthony Dezindelet yeah. is. He's going to be a little ball hawk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice yeah. job. That was absolutely fantastic timing right there. He just he played it and he, he watched the quarterback's eyes, and he and Great he came closing in. Closing there, yeah. Jay. Nicely done. Very nice. So McQuarrie into punt. Well, we know what a ball hawk his older sister is. Oh, yeah. She's a sensational athlete. Well, very instinctive with the way she plays as well. Any reason why the clock's running out? There is no play. All right. We got a whistle on the field. I think they're having a problem with the clock. No, I, th I think what they're doing is it's because it's 41 to 7. I think they're, uh, they're running a clock. They do running time in the league here. All right, so we got a five-yard penalty. Put it down. It'll be fourth down, fourth down and, 14. and 14. Armstrong and Seymour back to receive the kick. McQuarrie's punt is blocked. Wow. And a great job there. Number 44, Connor Mulvaney and Ibbotson, 32. Whoa. Both came right up in his in McQuarrie's face. Yeah. And, uh, um, Mulvaney with the block. Well, the irony of that is, you know, Connor Mulvaney, his, he had an extra point block down here on his kick attempt, and he said, all right, I'll get, get your back at that, and I'll have to get my own. Wow. Nice job by him. Clock keeps running now. Six and a half minutes left to go in the uh, ball game. So, so the ball at the 28-yard line. Let's see if Hollison goes back to war here to run the ball. Yeah, we've got a lot of new numbers out there. Number 20, Matt Arbonitis. Sophomore comes in at quarterback. Arbonitis on the handoff. That was to number 15, 
Anthony Del Ponte. Or 25, Logan Brooks. Loss of one. Get all this, give me some of the other numbers up there. Number two, Bill Nash. Number 77 is not on my roster. Number 61. Oh, 77 is Chris O'Connell. Number 61 is not on my roster. I don't program. have a 61 either. Nope. All right. So second down and 11. Not in motion. Hand off. Oh, nice run. Brooks. Brooks tripped up, though, at the 35-yard line. 63 is Rob Quinzani. Number 59 is Ryan Burchard. Number 76 is Daniel Campbell. Number 9 is Ben Wolf. Uh, 11 is Henry Naughton. I'm just trying to think I got most of the numbers out there. Third down and long for Holliston. Arvinitis rolls out, looks downfield, fires. And it looks like it's picked off. Intercepted. It'll be Westwood ball inside the 15 yard line with 409 to go here in the game. Well, it's good you get these kids out here, give them some uh, experience against a quality opponent, Westwood, in a, in a traditional rivalry game. That's you know, a big thing, you know, because someday you might need one of these kids and uh, they're gonna come out a little bit prepared. They're not gonna be all scared and nervous about coming out because they have played in games like this. Well, I hope you're ready to give out seven stars of the game, Jay. Seven. I, Seven. I'll tell you, there's five or six of them right now I'd give out to that offensive line. Well, that's, well. <laughs> right there. When you run war, you got <laughs> five up front and two tight ends. There you go. And the blocking back. That's right. So eight stars. And off on first down. Ball's on the ground. And it's Holliston ball inside the 10. So when it rains, it pours. Tough night here for the Wolverines. Clock's running now, under three minutes left to go in the ball game. Let's mention those stars, Jay. Your offensive line, Elliott, Solorier, Kelly, Lynch, Crowley, uh, Mulvaney, Ryan, and uh, the, the fullback. Ibbotson, what a game. Great, great game. And you know, like I said, I've said this a couple times to the broadcast already, Tom. We have a timeout here, so we'll, we'll take a timeout too. All right, Panthers are going to line up with the ball at the nine. First and goal, Arvinitis in at quarterback. Arvinitis hands it off to Brooks. Ball's on the ground though, scooped up by 15, Del Ponte. So, bit of a, bit of a lucky break there for Holliston. Not turning the ball over, but it pop it back to the 14. Well, to go back to the original thought, Tom, about this this um, offensive line and how they've how they've really responded and how they've done a, a great job. Not and, and not just the line, you know, everybody. They they really came out and. And I think Coach Kiley wanted to come out and establish the line of scrimmage tonight and win the line of scrimmage, and that's why he came out in war. I'm sure that's one of the reasons. So second down and goal. Minute 38 to go. Arvinitis hands it off to Brooks. He picks up the lost yardage, gets back to the 10. Nice hole there again by this... Uh, Offensive line that's out here now. These kids doing a good job, and they want to come out and they want to show something too. That's going to bring up uh, third down and goal from the ten. 
You know, it's interesting. Remember, we used to see the big powerhouse teams are scoring hundreds of points in college in Nebraska and Oklahoma, and they, you know, they put in the second team, and everyone they put in the second team. Well, the second team wants to do just as well as the first team, and that's what's happening out here. These kids want to prove how good how good they are. Arbonitis oh. takes keeps it himself this time, and I think that'll probably do it. Let's see if that's the last play of the game. 32 seconds to go. Let's see if the Panthers need to run another play. Fourth and goal. And I don't think they do. So Holliston with a 41-7 victory over Westwood here at Flayhive Field. And next week, Jay, it'll be the first little home cook in a comedian field. Finally, Thursday Finally. night. At seven o'clock, the Norton Lancers come to come to Holliston to face these two and one Panthers. And if I think you might have left out one little word, Tom, it's an impressive victory by Holliston. They they played really well all through this ball game, all phases of this football game. And now, Carlos Canto with Los's final lowdown. Thanks, Tom. The final score from Flay High Field here in Westwood. Holliston 41, the Wolverines 7. Uh, complete domination by the Panthers in this one. Uh, we hinted that rushing uh, yards may play a big part in this game, and they certainly did. Uh, Panthers dominated in that, stat, in that stat. 245 yards rushing, only 60 yards rushing for Westwood. Overall, 299 yards of offense for the Panthers, one away from 300, 135 yards for Westwood, 54 yards passing for the Panthers, 75 yards passing for the Wolverines. Both teams committing two turnovers apiece. Uh, 17 first downs for the Panthers, seven for Westwood. Third down conversions, three of nine for Holliston, two of nine for Westwood and on fourth downs three of four for the Panthers uh, but they got the job done on fourth down on defense uh, 0 for 2 were the Wolverines on fourth down conversions individual contributors for the Panthers I don't know where to begin with this one but uh, let's start with the quarterback Ryan Benko he was three of five for 54 yards uh, didn't have to throw the ball too many times but when he did he scored touchdowns two touchdowns uh, passing in this one uh, leading rusher for the Panthers uh, was Brad Seymour. He, or no, excuse me, was Dylan Ibbotson. He had 54 yards, including a 53-yard touchdown run. Um, however, a ton of other Panthers uh, with you know putting up lots of rushing yards in this one. Um, 54, uh, excuse me, 45 yards for, uh, from Dwayne Fahey, uh, 43 yards from Jake Armstrong, 36 from Tristan Benson. Uh, 16 from Kevin Quinn, even uh, 12 yards from Henry Naughton uh, as well. Uh, Brad Seymour with the two rushing touchdowns, Jake Armstrong with the rushing touchdown, and Dylan Ibbotson, as we mentioned before, with, a t uh, with that 53-yard touchdown. Uh, leading receiver for the Panthers was Brad Seymour. He had 36 yards on two catches, including a touchdown. Uh, Jake Armstrong with the other receiving touchdown. Uh, for the Westwood Wolverines, quarterback Reed Wilson was 8 of 22 for 75 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, leading rusher for the Wolverines was Jake Antonucci. He had 38 yards on six carries. And then uh, the leading, rush, uh, excuse me, leading receiver for the Wolverines uh, was Colin Fay. He had 18 yards. Uh, Mark James Jr. had a receiving touchdown as well. Defensively for the Panthers, Mitchell Gimblet and uh, Mitchell Gimblet and Alex Kelly uh, leading all tacklers. They had three recorded tackles apiece, uh, but we also had some big turnovers from this defense tonight. Uh, Jake Armstrong and Anthony Zindelet with uh, an interception apiece, and of course we had a uh, big uh, uh, kick block by Connor Mulvaney as well. For more stats and information on the Holliston Panthers, you can follow us on, on Twitter at HCATFootball, and that's the lowdown. Okay, great job, Los. Thank you very much, as, as always. Uh, Tom, big game for Holliston. Did a nice job, thank you. Lisa, thank you. Great job, Lisa, on, on the camera. But our two heroes tonight are Christian Boudet and Steve Hedrick, who are down there getting soaked. 
to uh, bring you the, the sideline cameras. So we want to thank them a lot. Final score from Play High Field, Holliston 41, Westwood 7. We'll see you next week. Get going. Good night. Good night, everybody.